What's up everybody and welcome to my TNA Impact Wrestling Review. Uh, we got a lot of things that are on the show tonight. Um, kicking it off with, you know, showing what happened last week with LAX and Decay in the street fight. But as we open the show, we kicked it off with Eddie Edwards, which kind of had some new music, kind of generic really. And we're going against Matt Seidel. And it's surprisingly, really, well, not surprisingly, but really, really great match to kick off the show. Like, both of these guys work well together, I'll say that. It was good to see a little more Matt Seidel instead of him doing a squash match against Trevor um, Lee, which, you know, I kind of get into that, because I, I don't know. Like, they they got to be better with Trevor Lee and Andrew Everett, because they, I don't know, they should they still need to continue that feud somehow. It was really going well, so they, I guess what they felt on low-key. But it was a really great match to kick off the show between um, Eddie Edwards and Seidel. So I opened with the shooting star press and everything. So it was a really good match. Kick off the show. Really enjoyed it. It pretty much went off a good um I don't know about twelve minutes, I think about ten minutes I believe, and really good. They shook hands after that. But after the match, um Davy Richards and Angela Love attacked him and his wife Alicia, which they pretty much had Eddie Edwards on the barricade then and took a steel chair and started beating his leg with it. And while they weren't, after they beat him with the chair, Alicia pretty much jumped off the um, stage and did almost like a crossbody on both of, uh, both of them, pretty much trying to go after Angelina Love as they broke them up. And so it was a hot start to kick off the show, I will say that. Uh, they pretty much then went to McKenzie M Mitchell, which they went to the GFW champion Magnus. We're getting into that, but a lot of that's a lot on with this GFW stuff. Saying he's next, he should be the, um, getting the title shot against. Bobby Lashley for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, but he has to go to El Patron. But Matt Morgan pretty much says, you know, I want to put that belt on the line and stuff. Because I'm the one that helped win that tag match, too. And whoever wins gets a shot for the... Well, he really gets um, Alberto next week. Christina Farnieri wins against... Uh, Sienna for the GOW Women's Championship. Which was a really good brawl. I'll say that. Really good brawl um, for this match. It was really good, and a really good match. Yes, Sienna did win, but here's the thing. Who cares for these GFW belts? And we're going to get into a lot of heels of what they said about, about, tonight about GFW, which can be really justified. Because what is what does Sienna gain off of winning this belt? Because this belt has no real history to it. Because when I heard Christine Van Aria, what, for two or three years? Who did she defend it against? Other than that, what else has she defended in the past two, three years? And I don't know what that has to do with TNA. And even some people say even Zack Ryder's internet title, or when the Hardys had their expedition of gold and won all those other belts or with all these other promotions, they mean more much than this. So I don't know why it's like one week they have Christina Von Air, you know, do a showcase as we pretty much debut in. And then next week she just loses in a very clean, decisive fashion. Which doesn't make a lot of sense. That's what I didn't get. And then we get the get the Eli Drake then pretty much calling um Bruce Pritchard a dumb, you know, his guys going around here, you know, guys like Plinko and Matt Morgan, you know, coming around here getting title shots like it's nothing. You know, guys like him are just sitting here waiting his drink because he can uh, pretty sure he can uh, kick this bitch down and take out Alberto. Until Alberto showed up behind him and called him a dummy. And Pritchard pretty much said that, you know, um you two are gonna go on a lot of night. And whoever, you know, well, I'll bet those opportunities for next week's match. And whoever wins tonight in the main event will get that shot next week and gets Magnus. Out the ODB video package. Uh, JB and Josh Matthews once again doing their thing, which JB is in the crowd holding board as fuck signs and piece of shit, which was pretty funny. Karen, you know, my match idea for somebody X Division title, and then um, Karen Jarrett. Talk about the GFW Women's Championship. She's all actually love versus Alicia next week, but when Sienna came up and um, when I said I got the title now, pretty much she, and this is what I don't get. Karen said that now Sienna has a target on her back, and a lot of women in the back want that belt. You sure about that? No, nothing, it doesn't make sense. Like, and I'm looking at this, I feel it's true if you say, I think Sienna's the face out of this. Because the heels from Sienna, Eli Drake, EC3, what he said a few weeks, 
and you gotta get the Bobby Lashley there on, they're more justified. Because who's after this belt? Why are they after this belt? And I, I'm like, really? Who wants this GFW belt? I don't even think Sienna has a target. Maybe Rosemary, since she's the knockouts champion, but Sienna now has a target on her back because of the GFW title? Who gives a shit? Like, really? You know, you know I've been kind of trashed GFW in the past few weeks, but they kind of deserve to get trashed on. I don't, I, like, Jeff Jarrett has done nothing with this company ever since he's made um, GFW, okay? And they never even had a TV deal. And I knew what they were. And they had belts. And, you know, I forgot when, like I said before, after that, when Cody had the next gen belt when he showed up on where we got TNA. So I, I, I don't know. Yeah, some people think there's too many belts in the company right now. And they should just stick to the TNA ones. EC3, pretty much is John Brolin, Brolin, uh squash match. And he got the mic, even though he was cheered throughout most of his promo. He pretty much said, you know, you're talking about the management in the back. You don't need to look, but you know, watch out because he's looking in the mirror. You're, oh, what hell's in the leash? EC3, no one can stop him, not even James Storm either. And he's going to be EC3 time world champion at anniversary. And this is kind of weird. The people were cheering for him and clapping for EC3 in the back. Really, they tried to pipe some booze in, it looked like. And then tried to mute his microphone or mute him when he was coming up the stage, like his reaction. Because I think people were cheering more for EC3 than they booed him because they were right. They were right on what he was saying out there. Because it makes sense. Good squash match. And, you know, he's pretty much, you know, going back to the old EC3 when he was a heel. And he was still really great on the mic and stuff. But I think people are taking his side against the new regime right now. They're, he's pretty much a face in the eyes of people, if you ask me. Magnus went against Matt Morgan for the GFW World title. It was a surprisingly really good match. I will admit that. Really good match. Matt Morgan's been away for a very, very long time from wrestling. You know, he's back now. And, you know, even though Magnus won't pretty much kick him, Matt Morgan in the balls. And they hit him inching up the driver in the elbow. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, kept them in the balls and pretty much with the elbow then. Even though it's kind of, you know, I don't know, they gotta do better with them. You know, I'm surprised Magnus is back in TNA, but um, some people think he's kind of looks too much of a chicken shit heel after just doing a kick in the balls finish. Because some people think that's the same thing they had when he was the champion at one point, the TNA champion. Was that, you know, he kicked somebody in the balls. But like I said before, it was a really good match. Problem is, who cares about this GFW title? Who really cares? Um, and then even Mackenzie Mitchell asked Bobby Lashley what he thinks about all this whole thing. And, you know, that title is just for them, okay? He, that's for them. He doesn't care about it. There's only one title in this company that is prestigious in this company, all right? Because he's talking about James Storm, El Patron, Matt Morgan. He's beating them all. And they still aren't good enough to beat them. And you guys have fun beating each other for that title. He has the real heavyweight championship. The real World Heavyweight title, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship in this company, alright? No one does not care for the GOW title, and he's right. Bobby Lashley was right on everything he said. Like, he said nothing wrong here. So, they're just trying to shoehorn this GFW thing to the guys on this whole show tonight. And once again, Bobby Lashley, once again, cut a great promo. I'm still surprised this man can cut a great promo nowadays and stuff. And also, you give credit to mostly Billy Corgan and Dave Lagan and others. You know, because some, I don't know what will Lashley up and get, you know, he you now has a voice. Because before he can talk, he always needed a mouthpiece. And now, the man can talk. Gotta give it to him. LAX was in the clubhouse. I still think that's cool. They brought a little that Lucha Underground feel to it. Talking about getting ready to decay in the street fight. And so we're gonna have a funeral for these pitches next week. So, they will pay their proper respects since Crazy Steve is gone from the company now. And only the Biss and Rosemary are left. Rockstar Spud in a very, very dark video was him in a wheelchair talking about the end of his career. He looked horrible. He was popping painkillers like it was nothing. He couldn't get to the bathroom. His neck was stiff as a board. He was talked about his knee being with a hammer. 
but it does it's very emotional and you playing sad music to it but and some people think they should have been done with EC3 but when they had a hornswoggle photo and then he said why I do it spud why did I pull off swoggle's pants down that pretty much took away the seriousness of like come on dude you get beat up by hornswoggle now this guy what depression and popping pills like it was nothing and very dark just dark so yeah now uh, Kongo Kong with Laurel Van Ness pretty much just wanting some his name uh, William something weeks in good squash match for him once again at least they're getting him over somehow and I should have thought about the Kevin Matthews video KM pretty much being a bully or something to some guy cleaning up so that he's doing sit-ups and he says that's the problem with these kinds of people with their, with their people skills and told them to make it like a tree and get out it's pretty good at least they're building them up with these video packages and you know Congo Khan being a, pretty much a mass weapon of destruction by well that mess pretty much the unstable woman and then after their action Sutter came out and was knocked him out of the way on top of his feet so he still did look strong for Congo Khan so they're doing something good with this guy just gotta give him time, I guess. Sanjay Dutt's eye really messed up for what happened another week with um the X Surgeon titles Loki landed on him. And Loki talked about this being a dangerous environment environment and Dutt, you know, he really respects him, but he wanted his son to see him as, as the X Division champion. And Loki said he has all respect for him, but yes, be a realist and Dunn doesn't have what it takes. So they could build a one on one hopefully a one on one match now, maybe a six person multi man match in this thing. Just give them video package and an identity and let them respond to each other and you got yourself a solid view. I wish they could still keep doing that with Trevor and Andrew Everett and um, even Helms right there if they can because they need something. I don't want them to just fade away and go into nothing. Cause I'm, and I like low key and Dutt, but I think I'd rather see the, the new talent being showcased. Eli Drake came out, so went to a new theme. Same thing with a little like more of a horns in it, I believe. When he saw the El Patron, he went in the crowd and he was celebrated with the fans he was coming out there. And some people say, you know, this guy, and his thing, you know, he seems more like a main event, you know. The guy is a great face and everything. There's some of that we messed up on. But like Lucha Underground and Ring of Honor, they get right. Even TNA right now having his face. And this was a really great match. A really great match. Even stuff I didn't expect Eli Drake. Eli Drake did a freaking moonsault. Off the top world that he was about to do something, he pretty much recovered from himself. And it wasn't like multi finishes is being hit everywhere. And we said just having a great wrestling match out here. Like a legit great match. Because I don't know what they brought the best out of each other, especially Eli Drake. I can't even remember the last time I can see it was a great Eli Drake match. I mean, you know, maybe EC3, but that was just, that was just a great match. It was no no type of scurry finishes or anything. They even kicked Tyrus out early. The referee was smart to kick him out early. Give him that too. But when it kind of came to the end, um, Patron was able to hit the um, foot stop finisher after Drake couldn't get out of the ropes. And, uh, you know, he pretty much won the match. It was, it was a great match. That was the sort of match I would recommend going back to look at. It. It, was just, it was a solid wrestling. Yeah, yeah, it was a solid match. Awesome, but... Uh, I will say it was a better show tonight, my only problem. There were some great matches tonight, really great to good matches. Only problem is, it's the GFW thing. That's the only thing that doesn't matter. The GFW thing makes no sense, like the heels are more better. Because Karen Jarrett just needs to get off TV, nobody cares. Bruce Pritchard, I don't know who is the authority figure at this company at this point. But no one is not caring for, you know, the GFW stuff. I don't think the crowd cares. I don't even know if they know what GFW is. They came here to see TNA Impact. All right, they didn't come here to see GFW. They came here to see TNA. That's what they came to watch. Because no one doesn't care about the GFW titles or the title shots they're doing. Great matches, just the thing behind it doesn't make a lot of sense. No one cares. But I think there was you know, some better wrestling matches tonight. But GFW doesn't matter. The heels are more justified in this. It's, only, it's like Bobby Lashley said, the GFW title, that's them. That's they can win the little golden ticket with that. That's the real belt that matters. That's the real world heavyweight championship that matters. Magnus and his GFW belt does not matter. So, yeah. 
So I'll give it that. And we'll see what happens next week then. But I'm out here. I'll see you guys later. Peace.